Good morning. Um, welcome to my show, Exploring Faith, with me, your host, Inonge Luca, here on Jumbo Radio. Um, in this show, we talk all things faith-related. So we talk about church, we talk about the Bible, we talk about questions that you might have about these topics that might not necessarily get covered or talked about in church, especially in African and Caribbean communities, faith communities, that is. Um, and and so today we are talking about another aspect that um, I think is very relevant for us as a community, and that is thinking about um, tradition and culture and how that sometimes overlaps or clashes with our Christian faith and how to think about that rightly. Um, so really, really excited to chat about this today. Um, please get settled in, get, get yourself a tea or coffee, um, relax and um and let's chat um but before we do that um i just wanted to remind you of different ways in which you can get involved with this conversation um you can um call the studio direct on 0141 530 or um you can uh, send a whatsapp uh, message or voice note on 0745 nine nine zero six eight two two uh, that is zero seven four five nine nine zero six eight two two and we will get back to you with some feedback from any comments you might have or any questions um in future shows if you're on social media you can send us a message on facebook we are jumbo radio scotland on twitter we are jumbo radio one and on instagram we are jumbo radio dot scotland you can also send an email to info at jumboradio.co.uk. Um, you can also find me on Overflow Chat, and um, that is overflowchat.com, and drop me an email there or follow on Overflow Chat social media platforms. That is Overflow Chat on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, and if you haven't already done so yet, you can download our mobile Jumbo Radio app available on the App Store for those of you on iPhone or iOS, or iOS devices um, and also on the Play Store as well. So you can listen to the show um, on the app. So we would love to hear from you. Um, let me know what you think. Do you have any things that you struggle with to reconcile your cultural background with your Christian faith? What are they? Um, drop me a WhatsApp message 0745-990-6822 or voice note. I thought before we could delve into the topic um, of culture and tradition and faith, it would be helpful to have a think about some biblical principles. So just some, some things from the Bible that can help us explain or understand culture, because I think that has to be the starting point, doesn't it? What is culture? What do we mean when we say culture? Where did it come from? Uh, and therefore, once we understand and grasp that from a biblical point of view, uh, we can then start to unpack. Um, some of the clashes that um, I want to talk about today. Um, and so firstly, I think it's worth pointing out that, um, you know, we have to start from the start of the Bible when we talk about any discussions to do with people, humanity, um, and the things that people do, the things that people make or create. Um, because Genesis 1 gives us an explanation of where we came from. It, it tells us that we are not random people um, and uh, just, you know, uh, random species in the universe. It, Genesis 1 tells us that God, God made um, everything, including us. He made people. Um, and Genesis tells us that um, God made people in his image. Um, and, and why am I talking about that? That might seem like an odd starting point when we're discussing culture. I think because when we think about what it means to be made in God's image, um, it's helpful to understand whose image uh, we're being made in. So what is God like? This God in whose image we are made and, and how does that relate to culture? Um, and so worth pointing out that, that God is um, 
is triune in nature, right? That's one of the fundamentals of a Christian faith. You know, that God reveals himself as triune in his nature. That is, there is Across a complexity. Across the world, why? Um, there's a complexity to that. Um, there, you know, it's, it, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about the Trinity another day, but let's just have that as an assumption. God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And because he's triune, that means in his very nature, God loves diversity. He is diverse in and of himself, right? Um, you know, in eternity past, the Father loved the Son, um, and we see the overflow of that love in, in how God reveals himself to the world. And so diversity can't be a bad thing right because god in and himself that that is his thing diversity is god's thing it came from god first before it came to us um and secondly i want to highlight um the creative nature of god right god makes the universe and when you look at the world um you know i love being um you know, seeing different things and, and being in nature, um, as long as not a massive long hike, but if it's a short hike and I can get my good Instagram pic, uh, I love seeing beautiful things and, and I love, um, uh, just enjoying different places and the diversity of all of that. Um, and that is because God did not make boring things, right? When he designed the universe and the fine tuning, when you look at science, when you look at all the amazing things that are in the world that are out there, when you look at the, the planets, just any anything you can point to. It's so intrinsically designed, like even just the human body and how it's designed, right? Like the, your eyes didn't have to be where they were, right? That That is the design of the human body and how things work and where things are placed. That is the handiwork of a creative God who uh, just doesn't design things anyhow, but there is an order to things. There is a complexity. There is a beauty. There is a design. Be there is a designer behind this beautiful design. Um, and so when we are made in this, in the image of this kind of God, we see where creativity comes from. The creativity to, to create uh, music, music that is different depending on different cultures, the creativity to uh, to create art um, and and different kinds of art, right? Some of it's weird, right? <laughs> uh, some of it looks weird, but to some people, it's it's interesting and it's yeah, you know, it's different. And and clothing and different items of clothing and so many things. There's so many things to culture. Food, <laughs> I love trying different types of food. All of that is to say that we are people. And people make things and people create culture. And that is because we are made in the image of a God who is diverse and who is creative. And out of the overflow of that, we too are like that. And I'm starting there just to say that culture and cultural things are not intrinsically bad, right? Our starting point is our culture is good because technically God made culture in, 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 in some, uh, in, in some respect. Um, and, and so, so that's the first thing. And, and then secondly, um, we are, uh, human beings are created um, different to other creation that God makes, right? We're not animals, we're not angels. We are people. We are, um, in Genesis one, God tells um, Adam and Eve that they're to subdue the earth, they're to um, have dominion. And that is not like a harsh, like I just do whatever I want. They're to cultivate, to take care of, to, to create and make things. And so there was a delegation given to humanity to go and make the world, the culture, build and, and do things um, with, with their hands. And, and so we start from saying that culture is something that God created and that he made it good. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. And this is where some of the clashes come from. Um, because although we understand that God created good things and, you know, culture, um, you know, can be good, um, the story doesn't stop at Genesis 1 because we have Genesis 3. Um, and in Genesis 3, we see that um, humanity, people, Adam and Eve reject God's rule. They said, nah, don't want anything to do with you. Um, I want to do things my way. We want to rule apart from God, God's good design. Um, and that is what theologians might describe as the fall. Um, it's, it's the rejection of God's rule. It's how sin entered the world. And it just doesn't affect our relationship with God, right? There is this enmity between man and God because of sin. It actually affects every fabric of the cosmos, right? Every aspect of, um, 
of, of life and, and the created order is negatively impacted by the fall, including culture. And that means that not everything that has culture, tradition is going to be good because sin, number one, sinful human beings have made those things. And therefore, there's going to be aspects that are good because remember, it's, it's, it's good. God made good things, but those things are going to be distorted. And we need to hold those two things in tension. The goodness of God's creation and the goodness of culture that comes from things that people make, people who are made in God's image. But the fact that that image is not what it ought to be, it's been distorted by sin. And therefore, there will be aspects to culture that are not helpful, um, that are harmful even. And we can see various examples of that where there's a cultural practice that actually harms people. Um, and because, yeah, people have made it up and it's not a good thing. Um, and, and so that's a helpful uh, place to, to, to start having those two things in tension. Um, and then secondly, just um, apart from that first principle, um, a, a second principle is um, thinking about um, why culture, our culture, um, and I'm thinking out here of African culture and, and our faith sometimes clash and sometimes we find ourselves torn. Like, should I do this thing or should I not? Should I participate in this or should I not as a Christian? Um, I think there's two main reasons um, for that. The first is that I think um, we bring our own cultural assumptions to the Bible. When we read the Bible, I know we like to think we're neutral. Everybody likes to think they're neutral, but no one is really neutral. And we bring our life experiences, our culture, our family backgrounds, and all of that. We bring that to bear on how we read the Bible and also, for, therefore, for Bible teachers, how we teach the Bible. And um, there has there's been situations where something is taught as this is what the Bible says, this is what uh, we ought to do as Christians, that when you actually dig deeper, it's got nothing to do with the principles that the Bible is trying to teach. It's been so heavily influenced by culture, but nobody has noticed it because culture can be the air that you breathe. You're just so part of it. It's like, yeah, this must be what this passage might, must mean because I, I, I'm only seeing this thing from this culture perspective, right? And so sometimes the reason that there's certain things that we might reject or might think, oh, I'm not sure how I think about that is because it's been so mixed in with culture. It's difficult to know where the culture started, when the biblical principles started and ended, um, and the two can often get mixed up. And so it's helpful. This is where I think diversity in the church helps because when we mix um, in our own churches and with other churches, people who are not like us, who are different from us, from different cultures, from different socioeconomic backgrounds, they help us see those blind spots of where we might be reading our own culture into the Bible and trying to make the Bible say things that it isn't, wasn't intended to say. It might be that an application from the Bible is relevant to you and your culture, but actually, if, if, if the principle that you're trying to take from the Bible cannot be true for all people in all places at all times, it can't be the main principle the Bible is teaching. Because remember, the Bible is for all people. Um, God is a God of the nations. So he can't be saying one thing to these people and then something completely you know, contradict you to another group of people. So a that's a helpful question. Um, you know, is this, is this a Bible thing or is this a culture thing? Can you apply that principle to all people in all places at all times? And there's practice, if you apply that to lots of different conversations um, in the church, that might be a helpful starting point. Another reason that I think those clashes happen is colonialism. Yes, I'm going to go there. We're going to do a topic on that um, another day, just uh, as a standalone topic. Um, but we have been um, so influenced by, uh, especially most African countries were colonized by Britain. And with that colonialism brought, a, I guess, a, a, a Christianity that was um, defined by Western culture, you could say. And, and so sometimes there are certain things that we automatically think as that's not good or that's not biblically sound, um, because the, the, the version of Christianity that the colonialists brought um, to Africa came with that uh, cultural baggage. They brought their own culture readings into things. Just as a, you know, a, a simple example, you know, there might, be, there, there might have been teaching about 
um, you know, the one true God and Jesus being the only way to the Father whilst trying to speak into African traditional religions, right? Which I would say, you know, um, yes, <laughs> Jesus is the only way to the Father and um, we don't have access to God through, um, you know, anybody apart from the person of Jesus. That is a fundamental Christian belief. Uh, but if you then observe you know, maybe traditional cultures or African religions and maybe they have drums or they have certain ways of dancing and you kind of go, ooh, that's paganism. You know, we don't want anything to do with that. Therefore, anything that's drums or whatever, um, you know, that's that's too close to that. And therefore, anything that is too expressive or uh, too much noise, it's it's too connected to that and therefore it must be bad. And and there's some denominations in, in African settings that would have adopted that sort of thing i i grew up in a church where it was like no drums we only sing hymns a cappella, and that's fine if that's your vibe that's what you want to do but it was this idea that like the drums are going to distract us um and it's like <laughs> what where did you get that from that is that is the the, the colonial theology um coming in and um, the baggage from that and so i think there's some situations where um, we've been influenced by that whether we like it or not i can see in in myself i have to unlearn some of those things um where you know you some things that are just neutral or are not in and of themselves bad or harmful anti-god or anti-gospel have been demonized or um made to seem as if they are somehow making you going to compromise your Christianity. Um, and it's made us, um, you know, this the impact of, of this has made us ashamed of some things that I would say are neutral about African identity, about African cultures. Um, and we have to, I think, recalibrate and relearn that and go back to the scriptures and be like, what does he actually say? What does this actually mean? What does it actually mean for me to worship God but not have to, like, an African myself? Um, not have to tone myself down and not have to basically become a whole other person with a whole different cultural mindset in order to fully experience and worship God. Um, and so, yeah, so I think that is, um, that is a helpful, um, a helpful principle. Um, and then, yeah, just before I move on to, um, I, I wanted to start talking about, um, yeah, maybe some practical let's get getting practical and just trying to think about some of the issues that might come up um with regards to tradition and culture and faith but um would love to know your thoughts and any questions you might have about this topic because i think i think it's it's just yeah it's something that you're, you're constantly having to live out um whether you like it or not if you're from an african background at least and you are in some way connected to your um your country of origin, um, if you're in the diaspora, or just your, you know, maybe you you, you didn't grow up in an African country, but um, maybe your parents did. There will always be that kind of tension, and I think there are aspects of that that will make you go, oh, should I participate in this thing as a Christian? So we'll talk about that in in a minute. But um, let me know your thoughts. Um, you can drop a message on WhatsApp. Um, our number is zero seven four five nine nine zero six eight two two i feel like i've been talking um for a while <laughs> um so i'm just gonna take a breather let you take a breather as well and um, just soak in um, especially some of what i've said there about some of the uh the biblical principles um that we 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 need to start with when we're discussing these things um so soak that in um i want to play since we're talking about culture i'm gonna play a zambian song because i'm zambian and well why not i'm biased um so i'm gonna play a zambian song uh by a zambian gospel artist esther chungu and uh this song is yeah it's gonna get you moving and you know if you're feeling miserable i hope this will lift up your spirits um let me play esther chungu sangha Lala. Hello, welcome back to Exploring Faith with me, your host Inonge, here on Jumbo Radio. That was Sangalala, Esther Chungu. Um, and uh, I, I realized I didn't explain what the song meant because some of you might not understand the language, but sang, Sangalala. Yeah, I feel like I need to say how the song says it. Um, it means to rejoice. Um, so Sangalala Lelo is 
I'm just paraphrasing here. I'm really bad at translation. Like rejoice <laughs> today. <laughs> um, and then obviously the, the lyrics go on to say why you should rejoice. This is the day that our Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So um, if you're looking for a weekend to add to your playlist and that brings joy, then you can add Sangalala by Esther Chungu Zambian um, Gospel Artist. But um, we are we're not talking about uh, we are talking about something that is relevant to uh, music as well because we are discussing um culture and tradition and the christian faith um on today's show um i would love to hear your thoughts um i'm just thinking about um other ways in which our traditions and our cultures um clash with our uh, christian faith and how do we reconcile the two um how do we distinguish what is um just tradition what is culture and what is bible teaching because sometimes um as i mentioned earlier those two can overlap um so joining the conversation uh, drop a whatsapp message or voice note on 0745-990-6822 um you can also just leave a comment on social media on our jumbo radio platforms on facebook on instagram or on twitter um uh so yeah so was just thinking through um some of the ways in which those clashes might happen and why they might happen um so the fact that we bring our own cultural assumptions the bible and bible teachers do the same as well um and therefore uh, sometimes we get taught stuff as christianity when it's not you know it's christianity plus the culture and that's not necessarily a bad thing and um, it's good to apply principles of a bible in a way that is relevant to our cultural settings it's just when sometimes that doesn't always fit so there'll be people who don't fully embrace aspects of their culture <laughs> that's fine as well and they might not love some aspects of their culture but if if the bible is then packaged with these cultural things and given to a person like that they might be made to feel like they're not a proper christian because they're not doing you know the, the things that they should be doing when some of those things aren't really like um you know things that the bible is calling us to do to become more like jesus and to grow in holiness and to love jesus more which is what we the, that is the aim um for christians it's is to grow in holiness in christ likeness um is to honor jesus more and more in, in every era of our lives um and so I thought it'd be helpful to to start talking practicalities then. Um, uh, and I touched on something earlier um, where I mentioned um, principles of how we um, understand um, things in the Bible and whether they're helpful or not. Um, the first principle is linking back to uh, living in a Genesis 1 and Genesis 3, Genesis 3 world. So living in a Genesis 1 and Genesis 3 world, both of those things are true of our reality and some people or some church traditions will highlight one over the other what i mean by that is the genesis one world is the world that celebrates the is it is a world that kind of wants to celebrate the good right god made creation god made things and 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 god is a good god and so everything that god made is good and so we want to celebrate that which is good that was true you know the good in people the good things that they do the good things that they create and we want to do that and 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 some people might want to emphasize that and which is good but if you then don't bring in the genesis 3 world which is to say that actually things are the the world that we see um has been distorted by sin it affects uh, people, our hearts, and how we relate to each other. Um, it affects the cosmos. It affects creation itself. Um, and 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 some church traditions will so emphasize the Genesis three world. We are so sinful. There is nothing good to bring to the table. God needed to save us, and and that is true. But if that's all that's emphasized, then you might be you know forgiven for thinking that people can never do anything good because you know it's all been destroyed by sin but no we live in a genesis one and the genesis three world and because of that um we need to look at culture and we need to look at tradition and anything man-made or anything that we're doing in the world through that lens that is to say asking the question of anything that you know we're looking at in culture is this good um is this true okay so so the truth and the goodness 
Um, and I say that because those two aspects are key to um, the character of God, right? He, he is a God of goodness. And so um, anything that is good for us, uh, anything that is good will be good for us. Um, and anything that is true will be good as well. I know sometimes it doesn't always feel like it, but he's a good father. So he would never tell us to not do something unless that something was harmful. And he would never tell us to do something unless that something was good, was for our good. Um, and so is this something that is good is a good thing? Is this something that is true? Um, and I'll highlight a few examples that might bring out those two elements um, in a minute. Um, and then as we are um, um, asking the question, is it true, is it good? Um, we want to then, um, whatever is good, whatever is true, um, Philippians tells us whatever is true, whatever is good, whatever is honorable, think about these things. And so we want to uh, take in the good. We want to enjoy the good. God has given us good gifts and good things for us to enjoy, therefore our blessing, therefore our flourishing. So we what is good? We want to be like, yes, let's enjoy. We want to celebrate it because it's been given to us by God to celebrate and to enjoy. And whatever isn't helpful, whatever isn't good, whatever isn't true, we want to reject that because that is not going to, if it's not going to help me, it's not going to help me grow into Christ likeness. If it's going to hinder my walk with Jesus, then that's not going to be helpful. Now, where it gets tricky is sometimes there are things which are neutral, as in they could be good, they could be bad, depending on who is engaging with it or, you know, what they're doing with it. Um, and with those things, I think the, the Bible gives enough room for like basically case by case application. So there's principles in the Bible about if something causes you to stumble, um, you know what, you don't have to engage with it. Even if it's a neutral thing, even if it's not inherently an anti-God thing, if it's not going to be helpful for you in your walk, it's okay. You don't have to engage. But just be careful if that is you're in a position like that, that you then don't try and um, force that or apply that onto other people who might actually be work fine with that thing um, that you're saying, actually, this is not going to be helpful for my Christian walk. Um, if that thing is a neutral thing and isn't, you know, actively anti i would say anti-god like actively like you know rejecting the gospel or actively causing you to celebrate something which is sinful um as defined by the bible um that is um so just one practical example i'll just use my example um so in zambia um we have what we call kitchen parties right um <laughs> Uh, I hope I explain. I do justice in explaining this. I feel like you just need to show somebody a video of a kitchen party because as soon as you say the word kitchen party in certain settings, people are like, well, what? That sounds terrible. But basically, this back in the day, the idea, like when it first started, the idea was, it's in the name, kitchen party is to help a bride before she's getting married um, to basically, they'll, they'll bring kitchen items and things to help the, the woman and to start off with growing her um, her home. Um, and um, so, yeah, so the ladies would bring these kitchen items. There was uh, teaching involved. So I'm teaching about um, marriage usually um, and older women would, you, you know, you know, do the teaching. And at, when it first started, this thing was like, you know, no unmarried people were there. So now it's like super commercialized. You're there with your pals. It's, uh, it's a whole extravaganza. Um, and it's good fun, to be honest. Like maybe not for the bride, but everybody else attending. So like you will see, you will catch me. If I hear there's a kitchen party and I'm free, I'm showing up because listen, there's food, there's music, there's dancing. I get to wear my African outfit. Like it's, it's a party for me. <laughs> the bride has to sit there <laughs> throughout the whole thing, mostly um, watching everybody else have fun. Um, but anyway, so at this kitchen party, it's, it's, it's like Zambian tradition. The, the principles of it, I think, are good. You know, the idea of like, um, you know, we, we, we want to teach women um, about 
you know, being a wife and 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 all of that. Um, I just wish there was a male equivalent because yeah, it's fine enough teaching the women, but what about the men? So yeah, if there was a male equivalent, I would be even happier. Um, and and so the principles are, are there. It's good. It's actually fun. The actual kitchen parties are fun. There's loads of different traditional Zambian foods. Um, there's people from all over. If it's happening in the UK, you literally have Zambians from all over the country. It becomes a catch up session basically. So I love kitchen parties because they're good fun. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, potential good in it. If, if, if you bring in the right people to do the teaching, it can be helpful. Um, but sometimes at kitchen parties, stuff gets said with Bible verses, a teaching part. And this can be the most shambolic part of a kitchen party because like they'd be saying anything like, and, and sometimes they'll then like the Bible says this and I'm sitting there like, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't. Uh, but these are older women and our culture says we respect older women because they are wise, but listen, age doesn't always equal wisdom and sometimes the stuff that i say at kitchen parties you know you know just endure endure like no if you're getting beaten up or like there's an like leave that is not wisdom to say endure but these kinds of messages will be said at kitchen parties right am i going to stop going to kitchen parties no um and so that is an example of this event this thing which could be anything it could be really good it could be really bad it could be really helpful it could be harmful uh, it's neutral in and of itself it's a function that could be anything you make it to be so i choose to take the good from it because i think it's a good thing i think it's unique to zambian culture i think it's fun i think it it showcases you know it's something different right um, I, I love being Zambian for that reason. Like we got all these things that we can do um, before we get married. So, so I would celebrate the good and I've been to good kitchen parties where I thought, you know, that was really fun. Um, usually smaller and intimate ones are quite good. And I would just reject the bad. Like I usually the teaching part is as sad as that sounds. Yeah, it can be shambolic. I just honestly, I switch off. Um, sometimes if I'm sitting next to people, I'll even make comment like, what did you think about that? Like, I don't think that's helpful. I don't think that's what that Bible passage means. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, so that is a practical example of enjoying the good, rejecting what isn't in a space where something is neutral, but traditional and cultural. Um, and yeah, yeah. Let me know if you have any other examples. Um, I'll finish off with some other some other principles um i want to play you one more tune um this is a, a song by nathaniel bassi bassi is it bassi or bashi i think it's bassi and uh, nathaniel bassi um and uh, the song is called onisha iyanu so here it is Hello, welcome back to Exploring Faith with Inongi. Um, we are talking about culture, tradition, and faith on Jumbo Radio today. Um, let me know what you think. Before that music break, um, that was Onishe Iyanu by Nathaniel Bassi, another um, amazing gospel artist. Um, you can add um, him to your playlist as well if you're creating one. Um, so we are talking about uh, culture, tradition, and faith, and uh, I was just giving a practical example of a cultural thing that is a, that is a Zambian cultural thing that I like and will participate in, uh, but know when to draw the line between what is helpful from that and what is unhelpful or even potentially harmful. I was talking about kitchen parties. Just go on YouTube, <laughs> Google kitchen parties. If you're like, uh, if, you, if I haven't explained it well enough to you, which I probably haven't, um, then video is the best way to just explain the full thing. Um, so let us know um, what you think. Joining the conversation, um, you can uh, drop a WhatsApp message. It's 0745-990-6822. Um, and if you're on social media, you can also message us on Facebook. That is Jumbo Radio Scotland. On Twitter, we are Jumbo Radio 1. And on Instagram, we are Jumbo Radio dot Scotland. And of course, you can also message me on my Overflow Chat platform. So you can go to the website, overflowchat.com or on Instagram or Facebook. That is Overflow Chat. Um, I actually have a video on um, my Overflow Chat. 
YouTube channel on this topic. Um, so you can check that out as well. But this recording will be available for you as well to listen to and share with your friends and maybe a good topic for discussion um, somewhere. So feel free to um, check that out on Jumbo Radio YouTube channel and Facebook and also on Overflow Chat. So um, that was one example. So kitchen party, um, Zambian tradition thing, some people hate it. I've got friends that are like, I'm absolutely not having that if I get married. And some people are like, I, they feel they have to have it for the sake of their, their parents, really, um, for the sake of their mom. Um, I think I would, I would have it, not for anyone's sake. I think I want to have one. I want to get dressed up. I want to enjoy the food. Uh, I just feel like I would want to just make sure that whoever is doing the teaching, <laughs> I'll be like, why? <laughs> I want to make sure that no heresy is getting shared, that they aren't going to be telling people to just, you know, make sure it's some of the stuff is not even necessarily, um, you know, you, you can tell that people sometimes mean well, they're like, you know, make sure you take care of yourself. But then they'll be like, so that your husband doesn't cheat on you. And it's like, that's not very helpful. That's not the reason you should take care of yourself. Your husband shouldn't be getting cheated. She didn't be cheating on you anyway, period. No matter what you look like, um, if they've made those covenant vows. Um, and so, so yes, yeah, so I was just talking about, you know, aspects of kitchen party that I enjoy and aspects that can be unhelpful. Also, sometimes, um, you know, the, the, the aunties bring, you know, um, alcohol and hide it in the handbag so um you think you're going to like a sober event and then at the end it's very clear that people are absolutely wasted um so sometimes that's yeah you know it's, it's not necessarily helpful so yeah so that's just one thing that if you want to do it go through if you don't want to do it it's fine it's not gonna you're not a good or bad christian if you do or don't have this kind of function but there will be an element of discernment required if you're a believer um and what you take in and what you absorb from these teachings regardless of if the people teaching you are elders or not um and that's another tricky aspect is how we relate to our elders isn't it like i just think in our culture, we defer to um, respecting our elders. And I think that is a good thing. Like sometimes, um, you know, Western culture is so casual that like the way people are speaking to grown adults, like a whole child is speaking to somebody that's older than them in such disrespectful ways. I am mortified, like, what are you doing? So there's, uh, there's good aspects to being informal, which is, um, you know, I bring some of those elements out when you are addressing um, abuses of power or things like that. I guess in Western context, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're 50, 60, 70 or 80, if you're misbehaving, um, you can get called out by anyone, whatever age they are. Um, and so there's, there's, good, there's good to that. But again, there's just something, yeah, weird about how we... Um, yeah, I guess glamorize a um, young age um, in the West and, and then denounce, um, you know, old people. Uh, you know, we, we have derogatory terms for them and yeah, they're so old, they're so out of touch, they don't get it. Um, and in, in, in most African cultures, um, the elders, it's the elders, they, what would they say? You know, they're factored into every decision. You could be having your own wedding and you... You know, you can be like, oh, we'll just do your own thing. But like African wedding, are you going to do your own thing? I mean, you could, you could try to. Um, but there will be that element of what about the elders? What about the aunties? What about the grannies? Um, I say grannies, aunties, plural. It's not even like people that immediately relate to you. And so how do we relate to older people? where um we want to we want to honor our, our you know there's the principle in um in the bible of honoring our father and mother um which i think the the general principle of honoring um people who are older than us there's a there's verses in proverbs about how we treat the elderly um and so there's there's that and then how do you reconcile that with sometimes these elders say stuff that is just ooh, <laughs> um not helpful right it's not helpful some of the things that they teach are um not good for human flourishing they're not good um they're not biblical they're not helpful some of them can be harmful how do we relate to elders honestly i don't know that there's a simple answer to that um i think it's a case-by-case -case basis and uh, the important thing i think in those situations if we are challenging or um you know, engaging with people who are older than us within the African cultural framework. It's it's really about how you do it. 
right? Because you 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 could challenge everything. Um, so it's how you do, it and also picking your battles. There's a wisdom in that. Um, you could challenge everything i don't agree with that because blah, blah, blah. but like there's a proverbs as well about like there's a time to speak and there's a time to just shh, just you don't have to say everything that comes to mind you don't have to share everything that you disagree with and even if you want to think about the time and place for that um and honestly it will save you time to pick your battles if somebody wants to say something and it's just something minor it doesn't matter you know what like no you won't die let it go it's fine let them say so sometimes i i i'm this person i'm speaking to myself here i just want to share my opinion and how i don't think that's helpful that's you know you know talk 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 and i've just learned to just sometimes just let let's just let them be let them speak but i will usually speak out um if it's something that i think is so serious that i'm like i think this is actually harmful i don't think this is helpful um then i will usually speak um, and because of the advantage of this, um, if you come from a secular family, I can't help you. But if, if it's like believers or Christians or people that say they're Christians, I love to hide behind the Bible because, and this is going to be my next point, know your Bible people, because elders will say all manner of things. And you know what? I just bring up principles and Bible verses and that shuts down the conversation because it's like, I didn't say it because they could be like, you're young, you know nothing. I'd be like, well, take it up with the Lord. <laughs> He's been around for eternity. So, um, so I think knowing our scriptures and, and that being the, the reason, I guess you could challenge things just because they're not your preference and that's fine. It's, I think it's harder to do that. But if it, if you're saying, I don't think this is helpful. I don't think this is going to help with anybody's flourishing. It genuinely helps to have, um, scripture backing you up. Um, and so, um, when we're having conversations about, you know, even just like things like marriage and what you should or shouldn't do in your home and, um, you know, the things that you should prioritize and why you should prioritize them. I'll start then asking, you know, I'll ask questions about, do you think that's something that's going to help me to grow in holiness or grow in Christ likeness? Um, and sometimes I'll say, you know, my, my dear, life is not that simple. You know, sometimes things are complicated and I'm like, well, actually I I'm a Christian and I want to, this is my biggest goal in life, right? I every mini goal that I have in my career and family or whatever, um, comes down to, am I honoring Jesus with my life? Um, and if something isn't going to help me to do that, I ain't doing it. Like you can, you can throw all sorts of things at me. You can try and shame me if it's not going to help me become more like Jesus. I, and in fact, if it's going to hinder me doing that, like I no no, that's not negotiable. Um, and I find that is a helpful thing because, um, I think it just softens a conversation a little bit because you're actually taking it. You're, you're appealing to an authority. Um, that isn't yourself you young child who knows nothing um, I, I'm appealing to the king of kings I'm appealing to the ancient of days because that's the wisdom of the bible it doesn't come from me um, and so I think there's no replacement for knowing our scripture um, and not just knowing bible verses so we can pluck them out of context but knowing the God behind the scriptures because sometimes there isn't a simple bible verse to deal with a particular situation but there are principles um I've shared some of them today. You no, know, I've not shared individual Bible verses, but there are certain principles that have come from, you know, walking with the Lord for several years. And you're like, actually, I, I don't think this aligns with this particular principle of how we ought to relate to people or how we ought to deal with people who are vulnerable or how we ought to deal with our finances. I don't think this would glorify God because X, Y, or Z. Um, and so if, if we are trying to um, make those decisions, you know, that, that can be a very helpful question to ask. Can I give thanks to God for this? Um, is, is, is this something that is being dressed up as good that is actually not very good? Sometimes people will do that. This happens at the kitchen parties that I mentioned where they will try and just teach traditional stuff, but then they'll add a Bible verse to it. 
right? Um, they, they do this with Ephesians 6 when they start talking about submission and what submission is. And then they just add a whole bunch of stuff and you're like, hang on a second, that is not the spirit of Ephesians 6, um, which is, you know, ultimately it's it's a f- example of Jesus that we're exhorted to follow. Um, but then they'll just add a whole bunch of stuff and you're like, is that the spirit of that passage? Is that what that passage meant? Um, and so if we are not discerning, if we don't know our scriptures, we'll easily be, filled into thinking traditional stuff that is harmful is actually what the bible teaches when it isn't and for those who then choose to then discard the bible and say i want nothing to do with it it's misogynistic or it's this or it's anti-women um it might be something just to ask yourself is it because you've sat under teaching from people who have um interpreted the bible in such a way that they just it's coming from their places of bias and they want to say stuff and instead of just saying it with your chest they want to hide um um and 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 behind spiritual language to give them a bit more authority than if they just say this is my opinion which is fine it's fine to share opinion um it's not fine to share opinion and then make it that saith the lord um so so that that would just be a practical guide i would say as um you know enjoy the good reject what isn't good some things will be neutral um and so you can get involved you can engage you can participate if you want if you don't want that's fine um just ask yourself those questions is this good is this true um can i give thanks to god for this um and for Bible teachers or, or those of you who are maybe sharing um, the word or trying to encourage other people, um, just be careful as we give our wisdom or advice. Um, if we're giving it from a, a spiritual authority point of view, like, hey, as a Christian, I don't think you should be doing this or as a Christian. Just be careful with those messages that we are not, um, you know, making the principles in the bible say something that they aren't saying and again a good question to ask that of um, applications of the bible is this principle and how i'm applying it um is it maybe just relevant to my circumstance and that's fine because that's how alive the bible is you can apply it um you can apply to different settings and situation or is it true for all people in all places at all times um because that's the timeless principles from the bible um so yeah so that is all i have on this topic um you can feel free to add your own comments um and yeah drop drop a message um you can follow me from more conversations about jesus about faith um about questions about the bible um, and feel free to also suggest topics. Um, I can bring on guests. I had a lovely, amazing guest last time talking about the Bible. Can we trust the Bible? You can check that out. Um, so if you've got any suggested topics also, please let me know. You can follow me on Overflow Chat. That is it for me today. Um, I'm going to leave you with a, a song called China Doom by Mercy Chinwo. Um, this is a song that means God leads me. And it's just a song talking about the year. I get the importance of being being led by God in, in all things and including this conversation around culture and faith. Let us be led by the word of God, um, the God who made culture itself. So enjoy the rest of your Saturday. This is China Doom by Mercy Chinwo. Thank you.